It is the month of April, and here in the Northern Hemisphere, that means it's galaxy season. Everybody's getting out their great big telescope rigs to photograph these far away beautiful galaxies, and I'm just sad. I don't have a big telescope rig. All I have is a DSLR camera, some lenses, a star tracker, an auto guider, and a waffle iron. Screw it, I'm gonna try it anyway. My name's Walt, this is Delta Astrophotography, and tonight we're gonna photograph the Pinwheel Galaxy. The Pinwheel Galaxy is a beautiful spiral galaxy 21 million light years away. I've been attempting to photograph this for the past week, and it has been my biggest challenge yet. At one point, I got so frustrated, I thought about selling all my gear, moving to Milwaukee, and becoming a used car salesman. But I think I finally got it figured out, and so tonight, when we go on our cosmic voyage, I'll be sharing my difficulties with you, so if and when you run into some of these problems, you won't get so frustrated and feel alone. Let's talk about the lens. It's the Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter zoom lens. Now I know a lot of people say you should never use zoom lenses for astrophotography, but honestly, I don't give a damn. This has been a great lens. Uh, at 200 millimeters, I could do Witch Head Nebula and then zoom out to 600 and do the Orion Nebula in the same night. All sorts of focal lengths for one price. It's just a great way for beginners to get to know the night sky. Now on my full frame Canon 6D, 600 millimeters is still not enough focal length for me to get this galaxy. So I decided to downgrade. That's right, I wanted a crop sensor camera and I called up my friend, Mr. Robert Birdsong, and he loaned me this. It's a Canon T3, not even the T3i. This is what we're gonna use tonight. The smaller sensor makes the image look more zoomed in or cropped, effectively making my 600 millimeter lens a 960 millimeter lens. With such a long focal length and the weight of the lens, my star tracker is not going to be able to handle this project well, without help at least. So I'm using an auto guiding setup. It's the uh, ZWO ASI 120mm camera and the ZWO 30F4 mini scope. They look like this when put together. This guide scope and camera are gonna communicate with my laptop and star tracker to help guiding be more accurate. I connect this to the camera by using an L bracket on the camera itself and an Arca Swiss plate on the auto guider. As you can see, it clamps right onto the side very easily. Now let's talk about some problems I had. Problems, That's not funny. Sorry. First of all, the camera only came with one battery and there was no way I could plug it into AC power. So pretty much when that battery died, I had to go back inside and recharge it. And that brings me to problem number two. The L bracket actually covered the battery opening. So I had to take the camera off the tripod and at that point, the shoot was ruined. I was done for the night. Speaking of the L bracket, it created problem number three. This L bracket was created for a Canon 6D and doesn't quite fit the T3. It's a little long. And when I put the guide scope and camera on it, it added a lot of extra weight on one side, which caused serious balancing problems. I would literally have to go out in the day and practice balancing just to get it right. Another problem I had was trying to use a new piece of software to control my camera called Astrophotography Tool. I just wasn't familiar with it and wasted a lot of time messing around in there. I ended up just having to jump back over to Backyard EOS, which is what I used all winter. Also, focusing was very difficult. The Canon T3 only goes up to ISO 6400 and the LCD screen just wasn't very bright. I tried using a batten off mask and that didn't work at all. I couldn't see the diffraction spikes. But after a lot of searching around through the eyepiece, I finally found a star that was bright enough and turned live view on and was able to zoom in using the zoom buttons and turn my focus ring until it was a small pinpoint. Whew, that was difficult. But the most difficult of all was actually trying to find the galaxy and frame it up. Some nights I would spend almost up to an hour searching for that thing and trying to get it onto the back of the screen. My nights kind of went like this. That's not it. Oh, nope. One hour later. That's still not it? Where are you, you elusive son of a bitch? So if you're having a hard time finding a deep space object, don't feel bad. It happens to all of us. Now let me show you how I set all this up. First thing we need to do is get the star tracker on the tripod, pointed north, and polar aligned. Now there are a lot of polar alignment tutorials out there, so you can check those out and get a more in-depth idea of how to polar align. Next, I'm gonna add my mounting bracket and counterweight. And then I'll add the camera. Now I'm not using a ball head. A ball head's too big and heavy and it messes with balance and all kinds of other problems. We're gonna use the telescope mount that came with the star tracker. 
slide it right on. Now this will most likely knock you out of polar alignment, but just keep checking it and keep adjusting it throughout the process. I literally check my polar alignment after every step of the setup process. You just need a red lamp and shine it down to the polar scope and make your adjustments. Before we add the polar scope, we're gonna go ahead and plug in the USB cable into the side of the camera that connects our camera to the laptop. I'm not gonna plug that into the laptop until I'm ready to use the computer to control the camera. Now we take the cap off the guide scope. If you notice, the auto guider is not actually parallel with the lens. That's not a good thing, and this is why you should always get an L bracket that is designed to fit your specific camera. Next, we'll take this little ST4 cable. It looks like a phone cable or an ethernet cable. It came with the uh, guide camera. Just gonna plug it into the side of the guide camera right here and into the guide port on the back of the star tracker. Now I'll take the USB 3 cable, plug it into the bottom of the guide camera and the other end into my laptop. Finally, I'll add my dew heater. It's very humid here. Now we just need to balance it. As you can see, it's balanced this way. If it's not, just move your counterweight. Then we turn it into the direction it's going to face for the rest of the night. Tighten that down and you can change your camera orientation as well. And as you can see, it's falling back. So I need to slide the camera forward in the saddle. And now it should be balanced. Now I'm gonna step outside and set this up for real. Then I'm going to get focused and framed up and I'll see you then. So I've got everything set up, framed and focused. Now let's jump into the computer. All right, we got PhD2 open here. First thing we need to do is click the brain right there. Go to algorithms and make sure deck guide mode is off because my star tracker does not control declination. All right, so just make sure that's off. Now we're gonna click right here to connect. I've already installed the drivers for my ZWO camera, so I'm gonna choose my camera. Mount is on camera and just click connect all. Now we'll click this little looping icon so we can actually see some stars. We've got it set to three seconds. Looks like I'm slightly out of focus, but I don't think that's gonna make a difference. All right, yeah, three seconds right here. Now let's go to tools, auto select star. And there we go, it's selected a star to guide on. And now we're just gonna click this green button. This process takes maybe three to five minutes. So let's go into backyard EOS, or you could use astrophotography tool if you want. Sudden, Sudden Walt from, from the, the future, future interruption. interruption. So as I'm editing this video, I realized that my screen capture software on my laptop decided to just die right about here. Luckily, all you really needed to see was how I got PhD2 guiding running. After that, I just set my camera settings to ISO 1600, aperture 7.1, an exposure time of 180 seconds, and I set it to take 60 frames or until the battery died. After that, I would have to briefly charge it, but not too long so the temperature won't change outside, and then go back outside put my lens cap on the camera and take as many dark frames as possible to stack with my light frames to reduce noise. Let's see how that went. Well, last night was a disaster. I checked on my imaging session about 30 minutes after I started it, looked great, went back inside again, came back out 30, 45 minutes later, and there was no galaxy in the photograph. It was only stars. I guess at some point the uh, star tracker slipped and I wasted 30, 45 minutes. So the battery was about to die and I just really didn't want to reframe and recharge and get started again at midnight. But on the brighter side, I think on night two, I did get some usable data. So I can show you an image from that night. The only problem with that night and all the nights really is that camera and lens combination caused really bad coma in my stars. It looked like they had little fuzzy comet tails out to the side of them. But what can you do? The only way I could have fixed that was to stop it all the way down to F11, and I just didn't want to do that. So if you're ever struggling with an image, just know that astrophotography is not easy. It's like learning a musical instrument. Never give up because there's always going to be another clear night coming up soon. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please give me a like and a subscribe and leave a comment. I'd love to talk to you guys about astrophotography. That's it for today. So stay spacey, guys. Clear skies and good night.